Hi there, I'm Zach Kircher, and you're watching Kircher Talks Entertainment. Back when I first started my YouTube channel, I thought of myself as a full-fledged critic, and my videos reflected that. I reviewed new movies all the time. Nowadays, I've shifted more to making video essays on various entertainment-related topics, so I guess you could say that my channel has morphed more into a journal of my various opinions. I'm not so much a critic as I'm a dude who enjoys sharing my thoughts with whoever cares enough to listen. If you're still watching at this point in the video, I just want you to know that you're a real G for sticking around, and I appreciate you a lot. But yeah, despite not doing many reviews for new releases these days, that doesn't mean I'm stopping them altogether. My new rule of thumb is that I will spend the time making a video if a movie comes along that truly deserves the attention, especially if hardly anyone else is talking about it. I'm all about supporting the little guys out there in the entertainment world, since, you know, I am one of them. So, enter Hundreds of Beavers. This has been on my radar ever since Adam from YMS talked about it in one of his film festival videos. I can't even begin to tell you how often I checked IMDb to see when it would be released in theaters or streaming. But you might be asking, why would a movie with a wacky title like Hundreds of Beavers capture my attention? Well, let me tell you. In a nutshell, this movie is a black and white surrealist action comedy that feels like a live action cartoon in the vein of something like Wile E. Coyote. Have I piqued your interest yet? The story follows a down on his luck guy named Gene Kayak who loses his apple orchard and cider brewery in a freak accident, only to be left destitute in the wilderness. To stave off starvation and old man winter, he soon shifts his focus to trapping animals. Gene first does this just for survival, but then transforms it into a profession, the likes of which he gets better at over the course of the film in order to woo the daughter of a nearby shopkeeper. Now, the stylistic choice here that really makes this movie so unique, aside from the things I've already mentioned, is that the overwhelming majority of animals Gene is trying to capture are played by actors in full-sized costumes. Smaller animals like birds and frogs appear as goofy puppets, but larger animals are portrayed by actual people running around in suits. You would expect this to be a gimmick that loses steam after a while, but the highest compliment I can give to Hundreds of Beavers is that not only is it consistently hilarious from start to finish, it shockingly manages to get crazier as it goes along. The even more impressive thing here is that it isn't some SNL skit that got stretched to 80 minutes. This is a highly ambitious project that clocks it at 108 minutes, the likes of which never skimps out on opportunities to be creative and clever for that entire duration. For a studio comedy produced for millions of dollars, that would be an achievement all on its own. Hundreds of Beavers was independently financed for reportedly $150,000 according to IMDb, which makes this a massive triumph for non-budget filmmaking since the funds were used so effectively to the point that not a single shot feels cheap. I really cannot stress enough that this is one of the funniest and most creative creative movies I've ever seen, in which much of that is owed to the effort that was put towards visual gags. That's crucial since the film is more or less a silent comedy, one in which all of the information is conveyed to the audience with grunts, music, sound effects, and of course, the visuals. I can't even begin to imagine how painstaking a process it must have been for director Mike Cheslick and his team to figure out all of that, but it's a major credit to them that they succeeded at delivering joke after joke without any misses. As an editor, I really appreciate that a lot of the humor comes from the punchy editing, whether it be from hilarious music choices, well-timed cutaway gags, the goofy costumes, or the endlessly creative deaths, the film never loses steam. It was a complete blast to watch from a comedic standpoint. And sure, the movie was obviously made on a shoestring budget, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Hundreds of Beavers works so well because its visual palette feels so intentional, and its kooky charm comes from the choices that result in it looking lo-fi yet endlessly complex. I would hope that anyone aspiring to be a filmmaker gets a chance to watch this, since they would have their hope rekindled and that their ideas could actually work on the silver screen no matter how far-fetched they may seem. All of that is well and good, but you may be wondering, are the visuals and the gags all the movie has going for it? Is there actually a legitimate story to this movie? That's perhaps the biggest surprise that Hundreds of Beavers has in store, because yes, it actually has a point to it. Well, maybe not in the sense that you walk away with your worldviews being shaken up, but rather that the film offers more than just a series of set pieces. The main character, Gene Kayak, is the key here, and not just because he was brought to life by an awesome committed performance from Ryland Brixen Colt Hoos. Man, that is such an awesome Awesome name. But more importantly, his journey throughout the whole film is genuinely compelling since we get to see him progress from a bumbling nincompoop into a tactical, ingenious trapper. There's no better way I can describe his character arc than
something like this. Imagine you just started your first playthrough of Breath of the Wild, and you're wandering the Great Plateau trying to figure things out. Eventually you get to the snowy sector of the plateau, and you start to really get experimental with how you fight the creatures you encounter. The more you learn from trial and error, the more satisfying the game gets, especially once you eventually leave the plateau for the remainder of the adventure. The first 30 minutes of Hundreds of Beavers feels exactly like a film adaptation of Breath of the Wild's tutorial. Gene Kayak trying to learn how to trap furry animals isn't just some arbitrary goal for him to overcome. There's a lot of satisfaction to be found in watching him struggle, since we first see him in a pitiful state as he tries surviving out in the snow, then eventually becoming more self-sufficient with the passage of time. The Breath of the Wild comparison was also intentional for the fact that, in many ways, Hundreds of Beavers echoes the structure of video games. To be more specific, anyone who has experience playing open-world RPGs will get a kick out of this movie. I would rather not give specific examples so as to not spoil the experience, but truly, the DNA of video games is baked into the very fabric of the visual style and even the story. Gene Kayak improving his craft feels akin to a player scaling up their gear, refining their playstyle, and leveling up their character in an RPG. This character is inherently likable due to his commitment to improving his circumstances in spite of all the adversity he faces. And what makes this even better is that the film actually gives the viewer emotional reasons to care about Gene Kayak hunting down, well, hundreds of beavers. This emotional connection is what allows the film to have staying power beyond the stellar execution of its visual style. It probably would have been fun enough to see a dude punching people in furry suits for an hour and a half, but the high effort approach to storytelling makes this so much more fulfilling than it could have been otherwise. And that leads into the final point I will leave you with. When I score a movie, I don't have some arbitrary grading system that I just grade every movie equally upon. The way I see it, a movie should be judged for how it accomplishes what it set out to do. Hundreds of Beavers is a movie about a guy hunting forest animals in the American Midwest, and honestly, I can't think of a way this exact premise could have been done better. I'm just so impressed that for all of the ballsy choices made with its presentation and storytelling, pretty much everything works. No movie is ever perfect, but this is as close to perfection as a movie like this could be, and not one moment of the audience's time is wasted. In my opinion, this is the true mark of a masterpiece. Other movies that have and will continue to be released in 2020 24 will have a tough time topping this one for me. Oh, and I forgot to mention this in my original recording, but chances are that you probably won't get to see hundreds of beavers in a theater by the time you watch this video. Instead, you can rent the film via Amazon or Apple TV. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For doing so, it really does help my channel grow, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.